when you complain, you make yourself a victim. Leave the situation, change the situation, or accept it. All else is madness. Eckhart Tolle. What's up? What's going on, y'all? Welcome or welcome back to the Broken Traditions Podcast with your host, LaRon, a.k.a. Real Rap Ron. On this episode, man, we're going to talk about something, to me, in my opinion, is uh, it's hurtful to the Black community, right? And that is whataboutism. Uh, for whatever reason, people love to have whataboutisms. And I've seen a whataboutism recently with uh, a gentleman posted a picture or yeah, he posted a picture of a Dutch volleyball player and he put it next to Shikari Richardson saying how there should be coverage on this Dutch volleyball player the same way there was coverage on Shikari Richardson. So before we get into that, man, first I want to the housekeeping. I want to say thank you to all the uh, channel members that's on Patreon as well as YouTube. I appreciate you guys and my gift to you guys. You get this content a few days early. Also, in this week's episode, we are bringing in a special guest all the way from Alabama, all the way from a whole different time zone, Kofa, hashtag Sofa, as uh, Heidi calls him. That's an inside joke, but Kofa, Growth Talk Podcast, gentlemen reaching out west through healing. So shout out to Kofa. Let's get Kofa in here. Burr, 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 burr. Kofa, welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> welcome back to the Man, show. Man, I appreciate look, you. My, my mic wasn't working. You got to give me some sound effects, bro. You got to get a hand clap for us. us. <laughs> I'm not doing that no more. Yo, what's what's going, going on, y'all? <laughs> like this. Appreciate you having me on again, man. What's going on? Not much, man. Um, let everybody know why you've been out of pocket, man. And how how come you're going to be on my channel and you haven't put that on your channel except for um, shorts? Uh, been on military duty, man. So I've been in uh, working in Alabama and staying in Alabama uh, since February. So, yeah, yeah I've been kind of out of pocket. So I know the... The lives, the videos have been very, very inconsistent, sporadic. Whereas uh, real rap Ron likes to call me, I'm uh, I'm super consistent on being inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man, I was I was super. I've been super out of pocket, bro. So yeah. the the army got they hooks in me right now. I'm trying to make my way back to the A, and uh, hopefully I can get to cooking a little bit more consistently other than the shorts so yeah man but the shorts have been great i can't i can't lie the shorts have been great uh i was listening to your morning motivation earlier i was like i don't know Kofa, <laughs> man you might have to make a book called morning motivations man just mad i, I am man I, yeah, I, I think I, i'm calendar. really gonna write down one like yeah. a, a Kofa's meditations or something like that so yeah that'd be dope man that'd definitely be dope so I want to get to today's topic, man. What about ism and how? What about ism? Um, to be frank, man, to be real transparent, I think what about ism bring out the bitch in us, and that's why I want to talk about it, right? Bring out the bitch in us because we constantly talk about what about this when we see something else, or we want other people to talk about this, and if we talk about these things, it doesn't do no. Ah, uh, what's it? It doesn't do no no justice to anything. It doesn't make a difference. So the biggest what about ism that happened recently, um, a gentleman posted a picture of a Dutch volleyball player, right? Uh, let me get his name. Let me get the information right. And I'm not going to lie. What he did, I'm not condoning. I think it's disgusting, right? Yeah. And I get the outrage that I'm seeing, right? I'm seeing a lot of outrage from other people from other communities. But the what about ism is with the part I want to speak about. So Steven Van D. Vlade, right, of the Netherlands. <laughs> he's a beach world champion mm -hmm. volleyball player. So he's playing volleyball for the Netherlands. So okay. uh, this Dutch volleyball player went to prison 10 years ago for raping a, a child, right? A mm -hmm. young girl who was 12 years old at the time, he got her drunk and raped her, somebody he met online. And he went to jail. He's a registered sex offender. And he served his time. And within the rules of, you know, I guess the Olympics, yeah, him doing that crime, he still could, you know, represent his country to play yeah. beach volleyball. So now the whataboutism came with Shikari Richardson. So last Olympics, Shikari Richardson 
um, tested positive for marijuana. From what I understand, she was going through some personal issues and she just, you know, went through that coping mechanism to get through those personal yeah. issues. And she got popped for marijuana. She wasn't allowed to compete at the Olympics. What I love about Shakari Richardson, she didn't make it an excuse. She put her head down, worked her ass off, and now she's perhaps one of the one projected to get to win gold. So shout yeah. out to her for, you know, putting her head down and getting where she needs to be. But people are comparing Shakari Richardson's story to this man Stephen Van D. Vlade, whatever his name is, story. Yeah. It's saying that. How come he could compete and she can't compete? Now, I I would say what he did is disgusting. Don't condone it. You know what I'm saying? Broken traditions, LLC, do not condone any type of behavior in such fashion. But yeah. the whataboutism is killing me because why do you want, and now I'll go back to the, the post, they wanted Emmanuel Ocho and Stephen A. Smith to speak about this the way they spoke about Shakari Richardson. I, I'll ask this person or anybody who wants that kind of information, name me any beach volleyball player for the United States, let alone the Netherlands. <laughs> Why would you want somebody to speak about something that nobody knows about? I we cannot don't even pick watch this sport. I can't even pick this guy up out of the lineup. If this guy walked past me on the belt line, he like a regular white European dude that's now in gentrification on Atlanta that you yeah. just walked past <laughs> that you would not think about is drinking beer. You would not even consider this man to be who he was. But if Shakari Richardson won't buy me, I'm going to know who exactly who she is. So she's a public figure in the United States. You want to take the same energy that Stephen A. Smith and Emmanuel Ocho did to have for this guy that nobody knows. So that whataboutism, it just, it, it just throws me off when I see that. Yeah, so with that whataboutism, we like to pump our brakes when it comes to us. Because you yep. you know the you know the example I'm going to, R. Kelly. How yep. many people were banging on R. Kelly but got cussed out up and down, and people are still talking about man if they release him tomorrow I'm going to the concert. We still yep. can go to a kickback or a restaurant and they're still playing his music and things like that. Did the thing about what about ism is once you've okayed a behavior within your group, you can't mm -hmm. get mad about it with another group. You take away your leverage. You take away your moral high ground. Yep. Because you're okay with the behavior. So this one coming out of the blue, like you're reaching way back, like you said, what, two, four years ago to the other Olympics or the World Games where Shakara couldn't compete because she mm -hmm. tested positive. And I think we had talked about it before. Like you say you made a good statement, like people are making her a victim when she doesn't want to be. Nope. They're making a making uh they're victimizing her when she did when she never took that stand. She took it on the chin. She said she was going to be back. She sat down. She worked hard. She shut up and just focused on running. Yep. And now, like you said, she's probably going to win gold this year because she did the work. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about a guy. You know, at present, somebody finds out about it, and you want to dial the clock back four years ago when it was unfair. The what about ism? But like mm -hmm. you said, what he did was 10 years ago, served his time for whatever reason the Netherlands saw fit to let him out and let him represent their country. But at the same time, America's done the same thing with, with pedophilia. Yeah. Like you can you can go to your, your neighborhood map and find where registered sex offenders are. Guess what they're doing? They're working. Get I mean, job. this man is... Day. He's representing his country playing volleyball. He's not working at a daycare. Like, you, yeah. even though the crime is disgusting, you still have a right to work after you paid your debt to society. However, they, they see fit your debt to need to be paid. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You still have that right. And the, I don't know, man. When I seen that post, I was like, dog, what? why are we take you here? This thing went viral. Everybody's reposted it. Everybody's like, yo, he got a point. I think he got like 14,000 retweets. And I'm like, we're looking for, for a problem. We're looking for an issue, bro. Yo, Shakari Richardson <laughs> should be more of a... a, a, a how should Shakari Richardson bossed up more as a human being? Like, man, I'll say this. How does she man up more about her situation than you are about her situation? Like, she's not talking about anybody else but herself and trying to get herself to the level where she needs to be to be a great athlete. But your mans who posting this stuff and everybody who's reposting it and retweeting it is 
trying to make her the victim. And once you fall into victimhood, it's like every time you're a victim, another another foot of the floor fall underneath you. Yeah. And you're going to be so down <laughs> in there, you're never going to climb up. You're never going to climb up. And that's where we are as a culture, bro. A lot, yeah. a lot of things. It's, it's, we have to find a problem. We got to find a problem for every solution. Yeah. <laughs> like instead of instead of championing her as a victor, whether or not she wins gold, the fact that she got back, literally got back in the race. Yeah. Working hard. Now we want to dial the clock back to, you remember when they wouldn't let such and such run and this, that, and the third? And look at these white boys. Once you start the whataboutism and pointing fingers and white folks do it too, Mm -hmm. then you clap for your people when they do it or you ignore it, you know, all together. Now you open up the door for what does it matter that you're complaining? What does it matter? What petition? What does it matter that you're marching? Cause you, yeah. you're okay with the behavior as long as it comes from your group. And as black people, we have a huge problem with that in the culture. Yeah. Like that, that's what it's become this perpetual victimhood. And I'm just tired of it, bro. I'm, I'm tired of brothers, you know, and, you know, sisters in Shikari's case, they really work hard to get where they're at, mm -hmm. keep their head low and inspire people through that. But still, you want to pull them back. And like, I know brothers are real bad with it. The survivors remorse thinking you just got to stay in this spot. Yeah. To make everybody happy or that that's what you were known for. Like, you know, with her situation. Let, but you don't want you don't want to have those type of people with that perseverance to be known for persevering. Yeah, facts. doing something total a, a total one eighty, and it goes right back to what we're comparing them to, because like you said, what the dude did was totally disgusting. Like you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know how I feel about pedophiles, but I believe you take them out back. I'm a, I'm gonna let that be what it is with that simple yeah. statement. You you take them out back, but there's also that gray area where is it true? That's unfortunate, but it is a gray area. Yeah, that, that's the one that we don't like to talk about. Is it true? But obviously yeah. this guy was convicted. It, you know, it must be something. I think he also, he also pled guilty, so it's like. Yeah, yeah he did it. He only but got he four also, years, yeah. Right. And, that, and that's the sad thing about, you know, uh, child diddlers. Like the, the laws in America are lenient on them. Obviously, the ne Netherlands, apparently, and they still see fit for this guy to well, represent your country. For more information, it happened in Great Britain. So he served half the time in Great Britain, then went to the Netherlands and became and a citizen. Like, it. he was able to do all that, then come out of jail, register, you know, be uh, a registered sex offender in the Great Britain, but not in Netherlands, and represent his country that he's now residing in for beach volleyball. Yeah. So, so again, Britain, Britain slapped them on the wrist, so to speak. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I've seen it where there were, again, I'm in the Army, so I had a soldier, and I work in the legal department in the Army. We had a case where a soldier got caught up with a young girl. He was kind of, he was young too, but he was a grown man, you know, by, you know, legal standards and all that. He was like 22. The mm -hmm. girl that he was sleeping with was like 15. Well, she had lied. We, you know, fast forward, she lied, told him she was 18, and they had been living this whole shacking up lifestyle. Like he'd get up, go to work, come to the, you know, our military building or whatever. And the mm -hmm. girl's 15, but she's not going to school. Like there's no hints that she's that young. Yeah. Um, until they break up. Mm. Then she goes, tell the police what he did to her. The police interview her, interview the mom, and drop the charges. Cause the mom was just like, oh, she got another one. Wow. So this 15 year old girl had a history of running away from home and sleeping around or laying up with grown men. Mm. So they dropped the charges because like the dude, he didn't know. And again, he's a young cat too. Yeah. So he's 22, you know, 18 is four year different. Both of y'all legally grown now. So she played that role. And then having to look at the case on the military side, we look at the, the evidence, we go straight to her Facebook page. She ain't look 15. Mm. Now, me being, you know, 30 something at the time, I'd be like, okay, that's a baby. She looked 19, could have passed yeah. for 20, but she was 15. Wow. The only reason that came out, because she got mad. Now, this man, young man's career could have been totally over. Not yeah. just his career, his life could have been over. Yeah. Because a lot of people so don't that's, take it that's somebody, 
that uh that was able to escape that but this dude in the netherlands back on him got convicted did the time and now he's out yeah we do this again we do the same thing in the states look how long it took for them to get r kelly look for look how long it took for them to get diddy now he wasn't diddling kids that we know of that we know of i mean yeah yeah but all the freaky stuff that was going on the or the abuse and other things like that. But I mean, you can take it a step further. All the people who enabled R. Kelly during those times. To include the parents. To include the parents. You had so many I mean, people participating, looking the other way. Yeah. And if we want to get into more of what about ism, right? I guess if you discuss it by that, rightfully so. Like I, I said before, the girl who sung "What About uh, What Is the Song?" put in your mouth was twelve years old, yeah. thirteen years old. What she sung that song? By Akinelli. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that until you dropped that one on me. Yeah, but Hell, I'll leave that it, for another day because I even try yeah. to go down that rabbit hole. We go down but, that rabbit hole, man, because you know I was getting <laughs> ready to bring up Foxy. Foxy was like fourteen, fifteen, and I, you know I always hear it from my New York people. You from up top, but I always mm-hmm. hear, it. man, we grew up fast up here. But yeah, shot at 14, 15. And at the time, I'm thinking, like, damn, she's a grown woman because I'm watching the videos. Yeah. Fast forward in our early 20s, I find out we the same fucking age. Yep. <sighs> what went but, on behind closed doors? But, but again, yeah. we look the other way when we want to. And then we pull the what about ism card when we want to. And now we need to have a rally and a boycott. Yeah. And we want other people to talk about it. Like, I, I, I'll i say this, man. Like, you know what I'm going through right now, my family dynamic and everything. And yeah. for, for what I'm going through, you have to, like, kind of step up in the manhood of taking leadership, right? Yeah. And when I see people like that, I see people who have those kind of conversations, it made me fall back. Like, damn, this is where we at as men? Like, this is where we at as men, where we are complaining about something, about somebody else talking about something else. That's what we're complaining about. We want to bring up, we just want to be a victim so bad. And you have daughters. I have a bonus daughter. And if she came home with a man that's saying something like this, I'd be like, yo, you got to get rid of him. Because during, t- th- during tough times, your man is going to be making excuses or he going to be the type of person to be like, all right, y'all have a child together. He be like, yeah, I'm a deadbeat, but I'm not as bad as him. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's going to be that type of type of time that he's going to be on. Because you see it in the writing of the wall. It's always an excuse for something else. Like I said, when you become a victim, every time you become a victim, there's another foot of ground that's going to leave. Next thing you know, you're going to be in a 40-foot ditch with no rope. And you're going to just be there no for the rather. rest of your life, no matter what the situation is. Oh, you have a kid. Yo, you know I can't get no job. I can't figure this out. Oh, you can't get a job. Oh, you know I ain't go to school. You know they they was racist in school. Like, everybody else is figuring it out. Everybody's figuring it out. If we lived in a world where you got to eat what you kill, you would starve. Because you know my bow don't work. You know my arrow ain't yeah. sharp enough. Yeah. <laughs> you, know I, you, know, you know I can't skin I that. My, I popped my string yesterday. I popped my string, man. You know they ain't gonna ship me. I can't get no string into two days. You ain't gonna eat for two days. Speaking of which, bro, you know, you know what's a tradition in the Zulu tribe for the Zulu warriors? What's that? You know, you know they had it, how they have their that shortened spear that Shaka Zulu uh, innovated yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. If you lose your spear, you die. Your spear is your lifeline. Let me tell you how deep it gets. So it, 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 that you mentioned, it, you you eat what you kill. And yeah. people making excuses. Mm-hmm. If you lose, if you lose that um, that short spear, I forgot the exact name of it. You die. They would they would take you. You would have to. You couldn't find your shit. They would take you and they would club you to death. Damn. In in the military, they told us our M16 when we were training. That is your lifeline. That was like our samurai sword, our M16s. Like we had, we literally had to sleep with our M16s. And the mm. sergeants would come around when we were asleep and see whose M16 they could take. 
Now, yeah. of course, they're not loaded and stuff like that. But while you're asleep, do you have? Do you know where your weapon is? Because that's your lifeline. So again, just you know, taking it off the military aspect of how serious it is. If you mm-hmm. eat what you kill, what is your skill level? Yeah, I know we're expanding the conversation, but those little things like that—that that is a telltale sign of where we are as a culture, where we are as society, and like you said, where we are as men. Mm-hmm. It's so many men that are looking for. Again, trying to find a problem for every solution. Yeah. I'm going to say a little bit slower because somebody might have missed that. It's a lot <laughs> of people that will try to find a problem for every solution, not the other way around. Don't let that go over y'all head. A problem for every solution. Like they're looking for that victim. Yep. And it's, it's it, it goes back to like, we have to understand that we lead the culture. You know what I'm saying? We lead the culture as men, like it or not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I I, I say on the record, the way hip hop was ran by the men, that's why women feel they could be the way they are, I think. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why it, ev- it ele- elevated to where they're at now. So that's why, mm-hmm. that's where we at. And if we lead the culture with victimhood, being the victim, you know what I'm saying, in layman's term, being the bitch, like, if we lead with that, how... How do we expect somebody to follow us? And if somebody is following us, lead. huh? I said you can't lead. You can't. If you, you look if at- you lead with that mentality, you're not leading. No. Or you lead it. You lead it to a ditch. You lead it to <laughs> off the cliff. <laughs> yeah. You like Wally Coyote. Like you just going off <laughs> the cliff. You know what I'm saying? Your problems is road runner. He's floating in the air, coming right back, and you gonna go over there. You gonna look at the camera, blink four times, like ding, ding, ding. And, just drop. <laughs> and then drop. And that's gonna be it. And you, but you know keep what? dropping. Wild, keep Wiley Coyote never quit. He just kept calling Acme. <laughs> he just <laughs> he was gonna figure that thing out. Shout out to Wiley Coyote. <laughs> yeah. But even though he never quit, he's as far as the victimhood mentality, victims never quit either. They find like that's you said, true. they find new solutions to problems. Bars. Bars. So Bars. they never quit. They never quit. They always find another. They always find another, damn, man. This right here, I can't believe my man tweeted. I can't believe they got 14,000 retweets. That shows the level. Yeah, I know. But it shows the <laughs> level where we at, bro. It shows the level where we at. That's Again, just, you got one individual, and then you got several people around them. Or that align with that train of thought. And again, it feel, and, and to the point of the culture, he may have been thinking he was doing the black woman a favor. I'm showing support to my sister. Mm-hmm. Like, but it's it's still a, like you said, the what about ism. Yeah. Oh my god. Now you good. But I, I don't know, man. When I see that, it's just it hurt. It hurt, man, because it's too many of us that fall into that category. It's too many of us. Like I told you the other day. I don't know if you guys seen this or not. It was a bunch of white dudes in Tennessee marching with masks on, dressed like in Walmart outfits. I don't know if you remember old school Walmart where they had the, they had the blue top and the tan shirts, and yeah. they had like gators on around their mouth so they can't see who they are with caps. And it was marching with all types of flags. They had like you know um, old school American flags before it became fifty states, like the thirteen colony flags. They had Confederate flags. And they said that, you know, they try to preserve their um their history. They preserve their lineage, whatever, right? That's that's what their goal is. Then that happened in Tennessee. <laughs> Cole for laughing because he know what I'm about to go with this. Shout out to the um to the brothers um to the Hebrew Israelites. Hebrew Israelites, shout out to them. And they decided they're going to rally up in March in Louisiana. And I'm like, what are we doing, dog? I'm like, what are we? Why are we watching the? Why are we watching two different two different states? I'm not even sure Louisiana and, and Tennessee is the same time zone. It might be depends yeah, on what part depend, of Tennessee. Depending on what part of Tennessee, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this is what we doing? So all the stuff that's going on in Memphis, just for Tennessee alone, uh, um, the young man who got beat up by the police. All that stuff that's going on in Tennessee, y'all decide now to march because some white dudes marched in a whole other state. I'm so tired of marching, bro. <laughs> last, last, 
rally that I, I went to was during woke woke Kofa phase, like ten years ago for Trayvon Martin. Started to see the play then, the whole Black Lives Matter thing. Then took um took my oldest daughter and one of her friends, little girl I, I kind of raised too. Um, took them to a march um for George Floyd here in Atlanta. And they got to see how real it was. And they also got to see the aftermath when things died down. I don't know if you can hear that. My printer's tripping. But um, yeah, a little bit. It's all good. Um, after after everything died down, all the popularity, all the talking points died down. So they know what it feels like to get hit with pepper spray, to go out mm-hmm. there and sacrifice for the cause, mm-hmm. and then ain't no cause two weeks later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Wow. So they got they got a chance to see what that was like and to know that daddy ain't crazy <laughs> yeah. when I'm talking this stuff. And like it's only a certain amount of things you can do for the community if the community is rallying around victimhood and doing the same repetitive stuff. Like you mm-hmm. said, so the white dudes marched. So then the Hebrew Israelites went and went and marched in Louisiana at Essence Fest. Uh, um, <laughs> of all things, that fucked up the whole vibe. Like you know, the <laughs> like, these trying to like all the aunties and like, dropping like, kids all, off. You know what I'm saying? They trying to so Hebrew Israelites are like, yeah, yeah, I need to come up here. They they trying to go down there and get clapped up for the weekend. The Hebrew <laughs> Israelites that came down and threw off the whole damn vibe. But <laughs> it's like, okay, we're gonna show you that we can do this thing better. That isn't a positive thing. Yep. That's what I t- keep. I keep warning the culture, the community. Keep warning them about, bro. The things that y'all think that white people are doing so evil, you can't be okay with it on the black side, because that justifies white people doing it for their culture and their community. You just yeah. justify the behavior, and it's crazy that people don't realize that. It, that's absolutely insane to me how they don't recognize that. And give the perfect example of that happening: LeBron James, <laughs> Ronnie James. Again, I mean, more, why folks do it too? Yep, I like. I, I'll say this: I see basketball, I see the NBA as entertainment, right? To me, right now, it's like WWE. Heart. It breaks my Le- heart. But go LeBron, ahead, go ahead. LeBron James bringing in Bronny James is like Dusty Rhodes bringing in Cody Rhodes. It's like you gonna bring in your kids <laughs> to this business, and we gonna get these sales and these ticket sales. That's what it looked like to me. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't consider basketball to be real no more. I don't consider it like even the even the way the Celtics won the championship, bro. They won on 617, which is the area code for Boston. They won it 2008, then they won it 2024, which is Kobe numbers just to slap the face of the Lakers. Like it's just too many things that just line up. And yeah. I'm not I, I, it's not a coincidence no more. It's not a coincidence. I get it. It's a, it's all fake. I don't care if nobody says it's fake. It's already predetermined, and they're going to get these checks. So now, Bronny James getting drafted number 55 and getting an extended contract already, and House of Highlights showing his four-point performance as a... As a, as a <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's all about entertainment. It's all about entertainment, yo. Bro, and, and, it, and it breaks my heart, man. One, it breaks my heart with the entertainment piece because I'm a huge basketball fan. Like, yeah. you know, like I genuinely love the game of basketball. Take away the NBA. I don't care. Take Like, I love the game. I watch WNBA. I watch college. Mm-hmm. I watch women's, women's college. I watch high school, middle school girls game if they are passing the ball and – Cutting and right. saying, yeah. I just love the game. I genuinely love basketball, but unfortunately, I have to agree with you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out if it's predetermined when the Knicks are going to win the championship. When is it going to be our turn? Um, but that's another thing for another day. But to the <laughs> back to because you know I'll go down the Knicks rabbit hole. But um, with LeBron and Bronny, I don't have a problem with it. Um, when I spoke about it on my live the other day. And I was I brought up uh, Levar Ball, um, other dads who have been involved. You see uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. Mm-hmm. He playing you know playing for the Mavs, but you see Tim Hardaway there at the games all the time. So we've seen these father son duos, but we have we've never seen a father play as long as his son coming into the league with uh, Bronny and them playing together 
um, having the opportunity to play together. And, you know, of course, LeBron pulling the strings and the Lakers drafting them, making things happen. I don't have a problem with nepotism. I have a problem with the support, the blind support that was given to LeBron under the guise of white folks do it too. Yeah. But we often forget that brother that does try nepotism, that does get it executed, that does do those things within the community, and they're dismissed on a daily basis. I had Mm -hmm. a problem with the celebrity worship portion. Yeah. Like, I'm all for getting your son on at work and giving him an opportunity. And like we were talking about, we were discussing nepotism works two ways. The children have to take the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I used... um, Trump on the thumbnail as well because you know a lot of black people were complaining about his children shouldn't be in the White House and this we complained about nepotism the whole time. Boom, fast forward, LeBron James, Bronny, basketball, one of one of our celebrities popular that we like. So now nepotism's okay. Yeah. And now the excuse, the what aboutism is white folks do it all the time. But it's so many other black men that have left houses, left um property. Land. Yep. Yeah, pro- yeah, past things, businesses, barbershops, businesses. Um, restaurant. How many times have we seen a father work hard? Oh, that's so-and-so with the barbecue shack. And he passed it down to his kid and the kid runs it into the ground. Yep. We've, we've seen that several times. Um, like I was giving an example the other day. You know, we all love going to grandma's house, but as grandma's house and all these different generations of grandkids are growing up, they remember growing up you know, in the house with grandma because granddaddy had already paid off the house before he died. Mm-hmm. So somebody gets the house passed down. Now nobody wants it. Atlanta, I'm talking to you. Yep. East Point, College Park, I'm talking to you. Now you don't want to take care of grandma's house. We got these all these jobs. We, are, we, you know, our houses are bigger than grandma's. We're educated. We're doing so much better. We come such a mighty long way. Let black folks sell it down here in the South. Just focus on, you know, the South is what I know. But don't nobody want to pay the property tax on grandma's house. Yep. Now grandma passed. There's no will. Now you've got to fight in probate court before the city take it back because nobody did the right business. Or people that tried to do the right business got frustrated and don't want the house anymore because they moved out to McDonough or up to Kennesaw. And they left <laughs> <laughs> and they left grandma's house right there on Cascade open and these white companies and white um people come in and gentrify the area and then we complain about where all these white folks come from. Yep. See, nepotism expands, but I don't think a lot of times black people get that. But we'll applaud for LeBron because he's popular. The yep. celebrity worship, popularism, uh popularity contest, uh I, I I give you another example of nepotism. We applaud it until we don't. A music artist with no talent, but his father owns a label. His father is giving his son all the rights to all the music that's under him that he had produced for thirty years, and they running with these music. He's doing all these remakes. Yep. Sean Diddy Combs, and was his son named King Combs? Yep. He can't rap. But his father had the position to be like, all right, you can have all these rights to this music that I have. You can remake all these songs. As a matter of fact, let's get the original artists to come back on the songs and do the music with you <laughs> just because they need a check. And you know what? And I can. And yeah, I can. I can, and, cut, I can and everybody was doing it. Everybody's doing it. Oh, yeah. Can't stop, yeah. won't stop. Here you go again, doing all the songs over. And nobody had a problem. Because that never, like you say, when it works that way, nobody have an issue. As long as long as we can be entertained, yep, we're we're fine with it. With the culture, if we can be entertained, it works. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Now, when it came down to Trump and actual real life politics, oh, we lost our shit. I'll give you another example that we was okay with nepotism, for the most part. Mm-hmm. Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. Oh yeah, just because he got that pause, that D in front of his name, it's okay. <laughs> So it's okay that you got this, you know what I'm saying, uh, a man who's abusing drugs, who can't get his yep. shit together, that's making all this money in Ukraine, and now you're starting to see that this, his father's now doing dealings in Ukraine and all his money going to Ukraine. They probably getting hella kickbacks, but that's okay because he's yep. a Democrat and he got Kamala Harris to be the vice president. Yep. See, it, it expands past celebrity that we don't want to look at. But yep. again, these top tier 
people, you know, LeBron, Biden, Trump. You so you're mad when it's Trump. Sticking with politics, you're mad when it's Trump. You're 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 cool when it's Biden. You're cool when it's LeBron and basketball, but you're upset when I'm trying to think of some type Jerry of Jerry Jones. J- Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones and his kids. Great one. Yeah. Great example. Because they're oh, no, right. Another one you probably mad about, James Dolan. James Dolan. That was his father's team. team. Yeah, that's the Knicks. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when his father had it, it was better. Uh, yeah, when he passed. Yeah. I mean, Jeannie, you know, all the bus kids. The, the, yeah. Yeah. So when you see something like that, to me, that says build your own so you could pass it down. Every, if somebody else could do it, you could do it too. The same way Ice Cube is building up the big three and saying that te- teams are now $10 million a pop. Your contract, you're getting that probably what? A few games? So yeah. if you come home with that a few games, you could buy a team under Ice Cube and you could pass that down with your family if you put your name, image, and likeness behind what Ice Cube is doing. And you could build that up. You can still yeah, build yeah, that yeah. up. And then you can expand it. And you could expand what, what it. If the, what if the big three expands to the to the big six? Big seven, whatever the case. Yeah. Or somebody comes in and you know what? I want to buy that team. I want now I want to buy the team from you. You've already bought it from Cube. You you're the owner of the team. You're still doing business with the big three as a league. But yep. now somebody comes in a couple years later, be like, man, this is a solid team. You know they're they're on a on a big three uh, Golden State Warriors run. They won the championship the last three years in a row. Mm-hmm. Somebody might want to buy it from you. Wait till wait till it expands. Wait till the, that concept of the big three starts to expand to other continents. Because three and three basketball is very popular, very popular, and yes. it's actually um, an Olympic sport. Three and three basketball. Like, United States is not big on it, but it's very popular. And y'all yeah. going to be upset when Ice Cube start reaching out to people in other countries that start taking up these $10 million offers. White people. Asians. Yep. Yep. Look, y'all sleep if you want to. I know some ki- Filipino cats that ball their ass off. Mm-hmm. Wait till he starts reaching across across the, the globe, like you just said, man. Then we're gonna be man here. Here he goes selling out, <laughs> waiting for that shoe to drop, bro. Regular schedule programming, bro. It's the same thing over and over again. We gotta it's break the, the tradition. <laughs> we gotta break the tradition. Yo, Ice Cube. Like, if I had, if I had sixty, right, sixty million, I could spend. T- I would have put in on ten million dollars just just to try to get that going. <clears throat> I mean, why not make that investment? I would I would love to, man, if I hit the lottery. <laughs> I would love <laughs> to own a basketball team. And speaking of nepotism in that with Cube, look what his son did. What he do? He gotta put me up to that. Just 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 acting. But Cube yeah. put him in a in a position where he played him in the NWA biopic and or biopic, however you term to choose to yeah. say it. But anyway, put him in the film. And then he kept going. Yeah. He could have man, I, I did a good job. Everybody gave me, you know, kudos for playing my pops. Like I didn't grow up with him. I can just mimic his mannerism. Like, but he killed it. He actually yeah. killed the role. And then he went on to other acting roles. Mm-hmm. Like he's been in other films. Again, nepotism runs two ways, y'all, for those listening. Yeah. The children got to be willing to take that on. Like me, I didn't I didn't want my father's version of nepotism, which was go in the army. I'm going to walk you through this thing step by step. It took me like 10 years. I didn't, well, eight years. I didn't go into the army until I was 26. Mm. But everything my father told me has been true every step of the way. As much as the military has changed from old school, yeah, dealing with people and the military structure it's hard to it's hard to describe it without you being in the military Mm -hmm. but everything he told me he was that's nepotism he got me in a position then he was like now do this and i was able to check that block and having a conversation with him my grandfather gave it to him same thing would come from a military family but that's people may not look at it as nepotism because you don't own anything to this they own you and all you know matter of fact it's going to be alive soon now that my mic back working. 
<laughs> but the information, the opportunity is being passed and people miss yes. the opportunity so much because you're so busy looking for this grand slam celebrity. I own a, a fortune 500 company and this day and the third start to level you at and be able to pass something on and not pass on that victimhood, not pass on like, just for the sheer fact that so many people <clears throat> coming into this country surpassing us. Like, I work in tech. And hearing people speaking English as a third or fourth language that's now living in the States, making either the same or more money than me, that inspires me like, damn, you came yeah. here with less. And now we on the same playing field, I guess, financially or more. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm, I'm, I got a leg up and I'm on the same spot as you. And now and some people might say I'm in a good spot, but I could have, if I had that same kind of drive, where could I have been? That's how I look at things. And the yeah. reason why I go to go back to what about and how it is as far as manhood is like, I lived in that space. You know what I'm saying? I lived in the space of, damn man, you know how they do us. You know what I'm saying? Just being hearing these conversations from older people that I grew up around time and time again, saying like, all these excuses of why they can't do things as black men or why they can't do things yeah. because they black. They won't, they won't let me. They won't let me. But you got somebody coming here from Bangladesh that's <laughs> ba barely can speak English, that could learn how to speak English and now rise up into the corporate field of whatever they want to do. Yeah. Now you go to work, you're, you're the president of your company is from Bangladesh. Not even an American citizen. And you're going into work. Yeah, like how how does that make you feel? Like I don't know. Like I guess people be so stuck in their victimhood, they rather they, stay there. They stuck, bro. And this is my thing about victimhood, bro. I don't mind when people complain, but what did you do? Yeah, if you didn't fill out the application, if you didn't fill out the application a third, fourth time, if you didn't make that phone call, if you didn't send that email, if you didn't introduce yourself, if you yeah. didn't. Try to rub those. If you did not make a effort to get out your position, then I don't want to hear that shit. But if you, you know, everybody going to have those woe is me moments, those damn, what, what the fuck can I do next? Like I'm stuck. Like yeah, I yeah, get yeah. it. But people that have those moments that I know put in the work, I can respect that. Yeah. Facts. I can respect that. But a lot of people that were, that are doing the complaining haven't done nothing. I know mm -hmm. so many casters that are still 40 years old and still rocking with, like you said, you know how they do us. Like, yes, racism exists. Yes, black people have to work twice as hard. I hate that saying. Twice as hard to get half as much. Yeah. If you can figure out, if we as a group can figure out how to scheme and scam and hustle, because that's the way we talk to each other. Yeah. Oh, this broke ass nigga. He ain't got no hustle about him. This is, man, I got four, five hustles. This, this, that, and the third. I'm like, man, you better figure it out. But if somebody walks a legit path and does it, and it takes them a little bit longer, but they started out here, that other person was a little bit ahead, and then they end up over time ending up here. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think you're better than somebody? Yep. Oh, he'll fill out. Oh, he just did what some white folks said. Y'all better figure this shit out, man. Yeah. It, it, we we too smart of a people, and that's the thing that bothers me. Again, woke woke Kofa. I know our history. I know everything we done created, everything we've given. Cause we keep saying white folks taking it, but a lot of the shit we give away. Again, yep. our house, grandmama house. Back to the nepotism thing. Back to the what aboutism. Yep. And white folks to hold on to that house forever and a damn day. Remodel that bitch every twenty five years. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Mom and dad passed, left it to the adult kid, remodel it. Yep. Now that that couple becomes grandma, grandpa, great grandma, great grandpa. They pass, pass it to the next one. Guess what? Remodel it. Yep. Just update it. Rinse and repeat. We must break the tradition, LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man. I ain't gonna lie. I had another idea I wanted to shoot with you. I, I know you say about to eat, and I got some stuff I got to do. Damn, man, because... Man, you know one. we always do it. But you know, anything we talk about, bro, we end up doing part two, three, four. All we doing... <laughs> and you know what's crazy for your listeners that don't know? 
because I know my people know. I talk about it all the time. Like me and Leron know each other in real, real life. Yeah. Like as soon as we met each other, we got really, really cool kind of quick. Yeah. And like um, like he's going through some stuff. I'm going through some stuff. So we have these conversations when these cameras and microphones go off. So when we're bringing you this content, this is how the fuck we talk to each other. All the time. <laughs> it's crazy. And, like, all the time. and sometimes we get to cook and be like, shit, we should have recorded that. <laughs> yep. Every time. <laughs> Every time we're on the phone, it ends with that. We should have we should have recorded it. But <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah, man. I just definitely want to get your take on this, man, because I'm I'm tired of it, yo. I'm definitely tired. Like when I seen that post, I think I lost it. I lost, I'm yeah. like, come on, man. Come on. And like if if Shakari was leading with that, I would have gave him a pass. If she's not leading with that. You like you say you doing it for the sister girl. You doing it because you want to be the good graces of the sister girls. He he probably did that post, went to the Essence Fest, wore that post on his shirt, and probably got hella buns. Cause it was like, oh yeah, we need that in our life. He probably <laughs> scored. Right? It, 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 yeah, he probably, after, after the Hebrew Israelites got through yelling, yep. he, could, <laughs> he could walk nah, around with the shirt. Yo, he probably scored like, um, what's my man, Will Chamberlain off and on the court. He probably put up record numbers. If, he had, if they know he made that post. But wow. yeah, man, that it just I don't know. I just I don't I don't feel comfortable seeing, you know, grown men act like that and knowing where we're at and where we need to go. You know what I'm saying? And that's why sometimes I say we need to break away from certain people. And when grown yeah. men want to keep continuously want to be a victim it's not beneficial to nobody it's not beneficial to your household it's not a beneficial to your partner it's not a beneficial to your kids it's not a bit of, it's not beneficial to yourself and when you stay like a victim like everybody do have their woe is me moment like you said but when you stay that victim you're never climbing out that hole you get you you get kicked down that 300 hole by leonidas and you're never coming <laughs> back up <laughs> yeah, People just get, they get comfortable. That becomes that becomes their identity. And unfortunately, like you said, four, 14,000 retweets. Yeah. Fourteen thousand people with that same type of mentality or in energy in some mm -hmm. type of in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Yeah. And you know, perhaps somebody retweeted because they're against child, you know, child rapists. I get that. Yeah. But if you are retweet that, put a quote saying that you're against child. Compared Listen. to R. Kelly. You know, I can't stand that motherfucker, but Yeah. Talented as as he is. I don't I don't rock with child child diddlers. Nope. Proven. Like video. Yeah. Video footage. Yeah. That you could buy from Jamaica Ave back in the day. <laughs> and seeing those those DVDs. I'm like, wow, they got this D that's when they start cracking down on a bootleg when they had the R. Kelly DVDs out there. They didn't care about you buying booty talk twenty two. <laughs> 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 they didn't care about skills. that. They care about they the onion booties. They didn't care about those DVDs, but you start selling them that child. Mm -mm, nah, they was yeah. cracking down on that boy. Yeah, yeah, but because that's how that's what it was. Think now, think about the mentality, and then we can cut, bro. But think about <laughs> this. I want to drop this. Think about that mentality. People were so eager to see if R. Kelly did it. They watched the video. You watched a fourteen-year-old get sexually assaulted by a grown man, whether the little girl was fast and with it or not. The fact is she was 14 at the time. Mm -hmm. Think about how many adults watched the child porn back then. If we were like our age group, we was in high school back then. She could have been ninth grade, you know, maybe eighth grade, somewhere close to our she age. She was in our age group. She was in our age group. Our when, age when group. That video, yeah, when but that video came out. Think about how many adults and older cats was watching. Think about that mind state, bro. So everybody can't be mad about child diddlers. Yeah. This shit is so normal, bro. It is. It's, it's, it's abnormally normal now. Yep. It has been like that for such a while. So I don't know why bro felt the need to retweet that. And again, we still got R. Kelly supporters out here and others. Mm-hmm. That we that we sweeped under the rug, but let yeah. people know where they can find you at, Kofa, man. I'm going to put you on the big screen. Y'all find me on screen. YouTube at Growth 
G R O W A T H growth talk with Kofa gentlemen reaching our wealth through healing. That's it. I'm all on the Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, come through, drop some more subs to your boy. Um, again, I had some technical issues with my last two lives. Please forgive those. My mic was choppy as hell, but coming through loud and clear now. Shoot, uh, salute the five below. It was a it was a microphone cord issue, but salute the five below. They came through in the clutch. And I'm, I'm gonna take credit because I've been telling this man go to five below for months. Like it's literally right up corner for this man. <laughs> I'm like, yo, just go to five below, get a new cable. I could and not accept too. that it was the cable, bro. I really thought I was like, <laughs> man, I had to re-download the driver. I done changed, and I had another cord, and I tried that one, and that one didn't work. So I was convinced it wasn't the cord. And then I found another shorter cord, but it wouldn't have reached to the uh, computer like I wanted yesterday. And that one worked. And I was like, damn, it was the cord. So, yeah, salute to BT as well. <laughs> and you know, it's crazy. I, I was looking at the text, but I said, yo, go to five below. He didn't say, oh, that's a good idea. Your man laughed at the thing. He, you know, he could laugh at somebody message. He put, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, yo, go to five below. <laughs> Yeah, go back in your messages. You laughed at me when I said that. And now, my look. bad. <laughs> That's my fault, bro. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah, I said I got all my cables for five below over there. He for ha ha. <laughs> look, and I bought two. Where's See, the I bought two. I bought two of them. Where'd it go? There you go. I got one plugged in now, and I got a fresh one that's not even open. See, told you, man. Five below, man. <laughs> <I'm out too. laughs> Had to buy a backup. <laughs> yeah, this live is not sponsored by Five Below. But if you need cables, no. <laughs> go to Five Below. <laughs> Yo, man, I'm hungry as fuck, bro. Let me go. All right, man. I appreciate you coming <laughs> on, man. All right, Kofa. Man, I appreciate y'all. Salute. All right. All right, later. Peace. Peace. Yeah, man. So great conversation with Kofa make sure you guys support Kofa uh thank you for listening appreciate you guys all right man till next time peace real rap Ryan is signing off all right later one